All right, guys, and welcome back. So um, let's continue with what we were working on earlier. So what I've gone ahead is I've created the constructor for the map class. Basically, this just receives a dynamic array. This is just the one that I defined, you know, in lab one. And it's going to be an array of edges, basically, of paths, right? Like we specified earlier, this contains the coordinates for point A and point B. So that's one path. And this is basically an array of paths, right? So to show you how that works, let's just go ahead here. And I've got this method that, you know, just prints a path. But let's just do an example that takes one particular line only. All right, so we're going to create a dynamic array of um, this data type. And it's going to be an array of, of this. We'll just call this test. And there we go. So we created the test array, right? So now what we have to do is we're going to have to define our lines. So what I like to do is I like to go to this website right here, right? I've already, see, I already had a line drawn here. Okay, so what, what I like is that this website is really good. It allows you to just pretty much pick any point. So let's see, we're going to delete this point. Okay, I kind of have a little bug here. Let's <laughs> refresh the screen. Okay, we're not going to recover the map. And we're here, all right? So I'm going to draw a line. Let's say we're going to make a line from this Doedin to, I don't know, this Guadalupe Hill, whatever that is. And it generates our coordinates. So this is a really good way to test. So let's just, we're going to copy these for now. And we'll just put them right here for now, okay? We're just going to have them there as a reference point. So, all right. Well, now what we're going to do is um, create the 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 uh, lat lang, and we'll just call this, let's say, start one. All right. Now you have to be careful here because the constructor takes the latitude first. Okay, and then it takes the longitude. So here we've gone ahead and we've created this point. Oh wait, that was the wrong one, I believe. Yeah, that was the wrong one, sorry. Yeah, so here we're gonna create a start point and an end point, okay? And we've already created the method that draws a line from point A to point B. So here we're just gonna call this end one and we'll put that here. And okay, did I do that right? Yeah, I don't think so I did. I th think this was actually supposed to be here. Yeah, there we go. And this point, we're going to add it here. It's already there. And now this point. OK. OK, so here we have our the latitude of point of point A, or our start point, and the longitude of point A, and then the la latitude of point B, and the longitude of point B. So what we have to do now is we have to create the array, right? So we're going to just go ahead here, and we're going to say that this is line one, OK? Lat L and G. And this is just going to be in which start one will be in the position zero and end one will be in position one, okay? And what did I do here? Oh yeah, sorry, this is actually gonna be just this. It's not a constructor, my mistake. It was just that. Okay, so now that we've defined the end point and the start point and end point of this line, this is no longer necessary, okay? And here we've got um, just a simple line. Now, the way that since if you go back to this class, we're receiving an array of paths, right? But since we only have one for now, then let's just go ahead and add it to our array of paths. Okay, so there we've got that. And there we can see that that's all that's necessary for the, just to paint this first line. Now, instead of printing these edge verts, I'm just gonna go ahead and put test. All right, so this should just print um, one line. Now, now that we're here, we're going to keep 
programming the constructor okay so again let's write our little Java doc here this is just gonna be um, draw a path from A to B and edge array will be the array of paths okay so the first thing we're gonna do here is create the J frame okay now that's pretty simple we're just gonna create a new J frame and here we put any name that we want um, Let's, oh, this is with a capital F, my mistake. Yeah, so we'll just name this um, <laughs> my first path. Okay, looks like I'm a little dyslexic today. Okay, my first path will be the J frame. Now, this is something that is very, very important. Um, we're gonna have to declare a hash table here. Now, the reason for this being is, let's say um, you're gonna paint a, vert a vertex uh, from A to B. Let me actually just write, um, let me go ahead and create a new document here so I can show you. Um, okay. Empty document. All right. Okay, so let's say we have here, we have point A, right? That's really <laughs> terrible. And here we have point B, okay? So when we draw the arc, we're gonna draw point A, then we're gonna draw this, and then we draw point B. But if you have another arc, let, let's say it's from B to C, you don't want to paint B again, because that means that you'll have B painted two times, right? Every edge will get painted, obviously. And we also wanna make sure that C isn't all also painted, because you know how many arcs do you think B will have? and you don't want to draw B that many times since we only need it one time, right? So uh, what we're gonna do is before we're, we paint, we're gonna need to add those points to a hash map and then verify if that vertex has already been drawn or not. So um, I'm gonna create my hash table here in which here I have um, my key and my value, okay? I'm just gonna have it be a string and an integer, and I'll say this is a vertex map, okay? And this is just a simple, you know, simple hash table, you know, but I think I use the separate chaining hash table, I'm not sure. Okay, so we've already do that. Now we have to declare a special method here. This is really important, guys. We have a method that it has to be this name. It's set on map ready uh, handler, okay? Now, Basically, what this method does is it's just going to prepare the map. So I've found that it's easier to use a lambda here. I'm not going to go into the details of that, but let's just go ahead and write the lambda. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, this is just kind of like a lambda expression. Um, now, what we're going to do here is our map, we're going to get it, we're going to set it equal to get map. Right, we have to go fetch the map from, from our code. Now, we're also gonna declare map options here, similar to the line options and circle options. And we'll just call this map options. And we're gonna create a new map options object. And that stays blank. Okay, now inside this Lambda, um, we're also gonna have another one, which is map type control options. Now if you're seeing, you know, how does he know all this? This is basically taken from the demo code. I'm just saving you guys some time. Okay, there we go. So we've got those two ready. Now the next attribute that we have to do is we have to specify the position of the map. So we're just going to go ahead and um, set it as th uh, the position. I'm just going to set it as control position bottom left. Let's use the first one there. Okay. And under map options, we're going to set the the map type control options to control options. All right. So we have those settings taken care of. And now we have to now that we've set the options to the created options, we have to set them to the map. Okay? So the map options they're going to be our map options. That's pretty straightforward. All right. And we're going to set the center of the map as well. So that's something that we want to keep in mind. We don't want the map to always be 
in the middle of the world. You know, we want to make sure that the center is a specific place. So, um, I don't know. Let's let's find a value here. Center of the map could be. Let's just put a point here. I don't know. Let's say it's right here. Okay. So we can use this as our center. So again, our latitude goes first. So I'm just going to say this is new. And again, remember, we have to use this data type again. Lat LNG, in which that's going to be my latitude. Whoops. And this will be my longitude. So there we have it. That's the center of our map. And we also want to set the zoom because we don't want it to be looking at the entire continent. So I found that a good zoom is 14 or 13. So let's just say and we'll go ahead with 13 on zoom. Okay. And that's it. That's our lambda for the set on map ready handler, which ends right here. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is this is something that I found that is kind of necessary. We're going to add a delay. Okay. So here, you're basically going to add a small delay. Um, I think five seconds works fine. And here we can use the time unit class that I showed you guys earlier. So we're going to use the static class seconds. And we're going to sleep that for one. Okay. And we're going to need to have a catch statement for that. Okay. We'll just have that catch here. We're just going to make it um, print tracks tractor. Except instead of exception, let's make it an interrupted exception. All right. Just to make ourselves a little a little more, a little better. And okay, so now that we've taken care of this, here we're going to um, add frame settings. Okay, now this is the same thing we did in, in Apollos. So um, we're going to add our frame. And wh what did I call it earlier? Oh, yeah, so frame.add this. And we're going to make it a border layout. And we're going to put that in the center. OK, now what's going on here? Oh, sorry. I <laughs> put this outside of the code block. OK, so we've got our, our border layout, which is going to be centered. And we're going to set the size of the frame. And this is in pixels. So let's set this to, oops, I don't know. How about 1,500 and 1,000, just to make it you know, decent decently sized and we're going to set the location so we're going to set the location relative to null okay we're just going to just set it to that another the next thing we're going to do is we have to set it visible okay so that I know this is bringing you <laughs> a lot of memories from from last semester it actually came useful so okay now here remember now here's where we're going to declare the circle settings okay so we already have um, the constructor here and here we have circle options and our circle options are here so what we're going to do is set the options for this constructor okay so circle options um, we're gonna create a new object of circle options and that's in blank now we're gonna set the color first okay the stroke color so We'll say circle settings dot set stroke color. How about we make this this? And we're gonna put this into a string. Okay, so that's a color. Here you can put any color that you guys want, so it's good if you'd like to customize this. Um we can also say circle settings, or sorry, circle options we're going to set the radius of the circle. Now this determines how big or how small we want the, the circle to be, right? Now, again, we've already said that the circle itself has a radius, but we're going to make the um, this 30. What this allows us to do is have kind of like an inner and an outer circle. So that's, that's pretty nice to have, I guess. <laughs> and we're going to fill the color, OK? So we're going to say circle options dot set fill color and we're going to fill this with let's say the same one for now okay just to make it easy but like i said um you guys can 
change the stroke color and the fill color and play around with the two radius values in order to make, you know, to have separate colors of the concentric circles. And what else do we need to do? Oh yeah, the opacity. That's something that's also kind of useful. Um, we're going to set the fill opacity, which is just how opaque it is. And I'm going to make this 0.7, just because, you know, I just want to show you all the options. <laughs> that's it. Now we're going to declare the settings for the line. So I'll declare the line settings. Okay, so what do I want? What do we want our line to be? First, um, uh, we have to create a new line. So polyline options, like last time, and now I'm actually not too sure about this next part. Um, I saw it in the demo, so uh, I keep wanting to type that for some reason. Yeah, I saw it in the demo, but there's an option where you set geodesic and we set this option to true. Now actually, let's take a look to see what that does. And I don't have this, yeah, I'm not gonna download it, but yeah, whatever, <laughs> we'll just leave it there. And okay, we're gonna do that. Now we're gonna set the color of the stroke. So um, again, very similar to what we did earlier. So set stroke color, and I'm gonna make this color, I don't know, let's, figure something random, 4400cc, I don't know. <laughs> you can change, you can make that color anything you'd like, really. And again, we're gonna set the opacity as well. I'm just gonna make that one. So set stroke opacity to one, which means I guess the full color. And here set stroke weight. This is gonna be how thick do you want the line to be. And let's just make this 2.0. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do. Now, uh, in this part of the code, now we're gonna actually um, draw the path. In this case, it's gonna be a simple line, but this code will allow us to print an entire path, depending, you know, regardless of what it is. Okay, so we're gonna create our for loop, and remember the array that we de declared in the constructor? Well, we're gonna iterate over the size, okay? And now here's where we're gonna separate the values from that array, okay? So we're gonna have here, let's say lat1. We're gonna say that this is gonna be edge array. And this is gonna be very particular. So we're gonna get the ith element and we're gonna get the zeroth position of the ith element, right? And remember, this is our latitude, okay? And if we get rid of this here, we can see that uh, just, if we just leave that here, that's our lat length point. But since remember, we declared an array, so we're gonna get the latitude version of that. And we're pretty much gonna do the same here for the longitude of the first point. So we'll just call this long one. And this is gonna be one. Oh no, this is still zero, sorry. And this is what changes, get LNG. So now we have the latitude and longitude of point one. Now we're gonna do this again for the end point. This is the start point, now we'll get the end point. So this will be lat2, this will be long2, and now this is going to be 1 and 1. So there we have it. Now we now that we have this, we're going to have to verify what I told you about the vertex. So this is going to be if vertex map dot contains key, and we're going to make this condition not, okay? So if it doesn't contain the key, and the key, the way that I did it, you guys can do it any way you want. The way that I guaranteed the key to be unique was I concatenated the latitude with a money sign and then the longitude. That made sh that basically guarantees that no two points are are repeated, right? So if it doesn't exist, then we're going to add it to the vertex map, okay? So I'm going to put this note here in which it's going to be the same thing. Okay, copy this, put it in here. And we're gonna add this to that. Now, what this constructor does is this put node, let's take a look at that. Um, it's the first value to be added. So the thing is that we don't really care about what the value is, all we care about is the key, right? So this value can be anything you want it to be. The only thing that we care about is that that, that key is unique. So if we check this, and the key is contained, then we come out of here and we won't add it to that vertex map, right? And if it isn't contained, then we're gonna go ahead and, and draw it. 
So we're going to say generate circle and we're going to get the edge array. We're going to get the ith position on the zero point. Okay? So we're basically going to generate a circle which is our the method that we declared earlier and we're going to make this point the center of that circle, right? So there we go. Now we're going to have um, another case here in which we're going to regenerate the circle. We're, so first we point, like, let's go back to the uh, code. This circle pretty much just plots a circle at any point specified by the center, okay? So um, we're going to do the same. So first we plot the circle. Now we're going to plot the arc or the path. So we're going to say generate simple path. And here we're going to say edge array dot get i, okay? And that paints our path. And now we're going to check again if the end point, the end vertex is included. Because remember, in a, in a path we have a start point, an end point, and, a, and uh, a line in between that marks the edge. So first we make sure that that point hasn't already been plotted. And if it's not, then we plot it. Then we plot the arc. And now we have to do this all over again because we want to make sure that the endpoint does isn't already painted, okay? And this is really important because if you don't do this, you're gonna run out of memory and you'll have a stack overflow problem. <laughs> so that's a really important issue. Let's make sure this is one here. And we can go ahead and just make this value one, you know, just for the hell of it. So, okay, well, that's all the code that is necessary. So let's go ahead and test it and let's hope it works. <laughs> Okay, so to test it, I'm going to make this window a little smaller just so that y'all can visualize the, you know, what's going on here when the map gets printed. And let's run this code. And it should print this line right here. Okay, if we plotted our points right. Now my computer's a little laggy right now. All right, so we'll. And since I'm reusing my code from the set by my project from data structures, I'm just gonna I'm gonna load this file really quick. It's gonna enable us to enter that method, so don't worry about this for now. It takes a little bit. <laughs> okay, so okay, I've added all these vertices, whatever, we don't care about that. So let's plot our special path. We'll just say one and one, because it doesn't really matter for now. And this takes a little bit because of the delay I told you guys about. So it should print the map any second now. It'll pop up right here and we'll see it. Okay, so there it is and there we go. You see, there's a line. Now we, if we zoom in, sorry, my computer's running a little slow right now. If you zoom in, you see this is the color that we specified, right? And I don't know if you can tell, but here you can see the inner radius of, of, 20, of 20 and the outer radius of 30. You see it's a pixel, you can kind of tell. Okay, and if we zoom out, we'll be able to see that line right there. Okay, so we know that it works. So what happens if we want to add another line? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that scenario. So let's minimize this and let's plot another line just to make sure that it works. Well, it does, but <laughs> let's make a cross. So let's go from this to this, okay? That added a cross here. So we're just gonna copy these and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. So we're gonna go into the, the model and, oh, where did we have that code again? Oh, here we go. Okay, and we're gonna basically <clears throat> do the same exact thing, okay? And now you, you'll start to see the pattern here. So we're going to create another line, right? Another path. We'll name this start two, end two, line two. Again, start two, end two here. And we're going to add this line two here. So now when we plot this on the map, it's going to come over here. And now it's going to go into this for loop and it's going to print the first line and then the second line. And when you eventually, when you're going to, you're going to be using this method, to print an entire tree or you're going to print um, the minimum path using Dijkstra's algorithm or something along those lines. So again, we're going to go ahead and copy the latitude here and the longitude. 
All right. Sorry if my computer's a little laggy right now. We're going to paste that here. And we'll put that there. And now that we've taken care of that, we can erase this. So, all right, well, um, I believe that our code should work. So let's run this one more time. And now you'll see that it'll print those two lines and it'll make a cross. Okay, sorry, this video might be getting a little long. Sorry about that. Okay, so again, I have to load my graph here just to enter that method. takes a little bit. Let's minimize this window. And okay, now we can, again, we're just going to type in one and one. It doesn't really matter right now. And let's see what happens when we observe the, the printing. Here we see uh, it made five internal calls. Not really sure what that does. <laughs> but um, we'll see the map printing here in just a moment. And there we go. See? So now that we have this, um, that's it. <laughs> that's how that's how you do it. So let's go back here and I'm going to erase this code that I had since that was just the filler code. And I'm going to show you guys um, how it works with the actual program. Okay, we're going to put this to edge verts. And I'm going to run this one more time. Okay, it's building. There we go. So now this time the graph actually matters. So I'm going to load the JSON of the graph I created. And this is just a special path. I don't remember what this method was supposed to do, but it prints some sort of special path. So let's see. Um, I don't know, vertex 40 and I don't know, 14, 9, 240, let's say. So this is going to display um, all of the vertices in the path. Well, it should. There we go. So it has 126 arcs, right? And so here you can see all of the different vertex connections. And here we can see it drawing on the map. You see? So there it's painting. It's a little slow right now, but it's drawing some sort of path. I don't remember what path that was, to be honest with you guys. But it's it's drawing something. And well, yeah, see, that's how you can use that method to plot anything that you want. There we see that. Okay, I guess it's going to stop soon. I think this was supposed to print um, the longest path, if I'm not mistaken. And there we go. So that's it, guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, then you feel free to send me an email. But that should be that should help you get started with the project. At least focus on the graph section and not focus too much on the map part. So, all right, guys. Well, um, I'm available if you need any help.